everyone. Welcome to the next episode of I Love You, Colonel Sanders. So I know I'm wearing the same clothes. It's the same day. Um, in the last part, I realized that I had played for too long. I didn't realize how much time had gone by. And it was way too long of a video. So I cut it in half. And this is the second half of that video. Without further ado, let's get back into it. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by the lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. I love the sci-fi element of this. It's making me happy. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. So one-on-one, -on -one, just the two of us. It's gonna get heated in here. You approach Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. So this term, break the silence, it's to mean stop the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Ha 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 ha, how bold to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. Wow, I'm getting a little bold here. He's right. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He is clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. Okay, this word, persistent. It looks like a big word and kind of difficult to say, but let's practice it. Persistent, persistent. And here it means to just keep trying. So that's basically saying here, we're going to keep trying to get this recipe from him. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure that you're truly alone, then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Well, this is getting hot. Just one more ingredient, but you can't tell. I use. It's something my great grandmother taught me. Oh, wow, you'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. Jeez. And Definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before. So now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. Ah, uh -huh, I'm keeping a secret from him, jeez. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. So while you're wrapped up, wrapped up means you're distracted. You're thinking only about that huge revelation, that huge thing he just told you. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again, howdy. I should make a special note, howdy. It's um, a way of saying, hey, hi but it's kind of a country way. So in the United States, at least in the South, so like Alabama or specifically Kentucky, you might say the word howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. 
I think about how my story will continue after I've graduated. It sounds like you have good plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Oh, this is so over dramatic. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Here, figure is you decide or you think that now is the perfect time. Nag him to show your own strength. Nag is a slang term to mean put down, kind of insult or be mean. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest, but thoughtful. I like this one. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex, but comforting. The interplay between salty and savory and peppery, it was perfect. Here, interplay means salty, savory, and peppery, the way they work together. I appreciate the compliment, Alien Unicorn. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. Yay, we're doing well! We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place, it's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Here, show your stuff means show your talent, show how good you are at cooking. Wait a second, oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans that you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. Oh, sprinkles. I still wanna make him love me, is that possible? For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Wow, I'm getting kind of desperate. I'm kind of worried about this. Want to be my partner? Aww. Sure, alien unicorn, I'll prepare our station. Oh, poor Miriam, she's so sad. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. So here, take notice means they notice that she's standing here alone. Hello, new partner. Beep, boop, boo. Okay, so he's got either pop pop here or clank here. Hmm. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Oh God. Oh. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Hmm. I like Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay. I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. 
Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Ugh. Tissue? I hardly know you. Ha 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 ha! Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of infection. Infection. Affection! So here, judders, that's not a very common word, but it kind of means like shake back and forth like that. And a panel shakes loose, so a piece of him comes off. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. So here he's using a few idioms. No chef is an island. We use no man is an island to mean no person is alone in the world. You always need a team member. And then it takes two flints to make a fire. I don't see this one as often, but it's the idea that you need two pieces of flint to help you create the fire. So two again, teamwork. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. You say octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. So blow someone's mind means make him super surprised and shocked and impressed. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Well, we all know that this is definitely on a KFC menu. So I'm going with your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy! I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to get beet red Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. I'm sure it is, Colonel Sanders. Uh -huh. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off of my man. Mm. Did someone call for me? Oh, no, jeez. Van Van, while I'm here crushing alien unicorns' dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friend. Oh, howdy there, Ashley, Ben, Ben. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? So quartet is four people, uh, usually referring to four instruments that are playing maybe violin or guitar. And duet is two. Uh. Actually, no. It looked like Alien Unicorn was struggling, so we offered to give her a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! Doubt it. <gasps> Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel, deep down, that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. 
Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks, in your time of need. Hunk here means really handsome man. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. Here, bestie, it's a very, very common slang, kind of slang term to mean best friend. Colonel Sanders. I'm here to learn and to express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. So bicker means argue. Prima donna, we mean it as kind of a person who thinks they are better than everyone else. It's kind of a negative word for us. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements from contracts to handshakes. I took on Alien Unicorn as my partner for this activity and I stand by it. Here, stand by an idea or a decision means to stay with it and to keep it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Alien Unicorn's natural talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. So corgis are the breed of dog that he is. Ah, oh, Sprinkles, where are you? You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Here autopilot means you're not focusing or concentrating on what you're doing. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. So basically this is just saying that you were on autopilot, but you still have that natural ability to make something without being completely focused on it. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat out of which pours a smooth brown gravy smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The result looks spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Okay guys, I'm really hungry. I think I'm going to stop it here for today, but I think we're doing so, so well with getting Colonel Sanders to fall in love with us and share his recipes with us. So hopefully in the next episode, we'll get even closer to our goal. I hope you enjoyed our show today. If you did, please hit subscribe below and like as well. Also, please give me a comment telling me whether you'd like me to speak more slowly or faster or if you would like more vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation. Also, tell me your goals for English so that I can make this channel perfect for you. Thanks again for watching Gaming English. Have a great day!